It's gigawatts. One SI point, says so. 1.31 gigawatts. 1.21 gigawatts. Did you not see Back to the Future? Oh, I saw it. It's incorrect. It's gigawatts. It's gigawatts. Gigawatts. Giga. To generate the 1.21 gigawatts of electricity... 1.21 oh, gigawatts! I think it's gigawatts. It's totally gigawatts. We'll, we'll resume this later. Yes. Okay. Yep. I'm Joey Smokey. I'm Kevin Martin. And we're going to be presenting the supplemental instruction video for Chemistry 121. We're going to be talking about unit conversions. Unit conversions, you say? Yes, unit conversions. So, this is just a little list. Get rid of this so it doesn't start another argument. It's totally gigawatts. Gigawatts. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so these are all of the basic unit prefixes that you should have memorized by now. We didn't do an episode on units or anything like that since it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm sure you guys can figure it out. But one thing you're going to want to make sure you memorize is all of these different prefixes. Because remember, for your base unit, like, you know, meters or liters or grams or whatever, there's different ways to express big amounts and small amounts of those things. So up here we have, you know, like a mega and a kilo, and then here's your small one, centimilli, micro, and nano. So wait, the base unit doesn't have a prefix? Right, it doesn't, because you could just have something like one meter. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, right. one meter. Right, yeah. right. So, but if you want to express a bigger unit of meters, like, you know, one kilometer, which is made up of a thousand meters, then mm -hmm. you can go to there. So, this is just kind of a little table. You might want to write this down a few times and kind of memorize it, commit it into your photographic memory if you've got one. Photographic just, memory is cool. Or just press pause. And... You can do that, too. Yeah. I mean, obviously, this is YouTube, so, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So, anyway, base units, prefixes, all that. Let's get this out of here and talk about conversions. All right. So, Kevin, why do you think we'd want to convert different units? Well, I, I suppose it'd be to make things compatible. That's right. So, if we have, we'll just deal with the liter. That's pretty something to work with. Yeah. So, if I have just one liter. Okay. One liter, like so. Mm -hmm. There's different ways that I could represent that. I could talk about it in terms of milliliters or, you know, kiloliters or anything like that. So, it might be handy, depending on what you're doing, to convert how you're expressing that unit of measure. Okay? Okay. So, if we have one liter like this, and let's say I want to talk about it in terms of milliliters, do you have any idea how we might go about doing that? Well, you just start with what you're given, right? That's right. Okay. And what I like to do is, when I start my conversion, it will, Kevin and I have two different ways of doing it, and you can pick which one works best for you. My way is I take, like what you said, I start with what I'm given, and I put it over one. So okay. that way I know, okay, I have one liter on the top. That's good. I know exactly what I'm starting with. Then from there, I can go and convert it to whatever I want to. Okay? Okay, it makes sense. So what we're going to want to do is kind of start like this process of multiplying things. And the key thing we're doing here is we're canceling stuff out. Okay? So for the one liter, if we want to talk about it in terms of milliliters, we want to find something that relates liter and milliliter together. So what do you think we might use for that? Well, I would use a conversion rate. Right? A conversion rate, exactly. So a conversion rate looks something like this. If you want to relate liters to milliliters, you do it like this. One liter for every 1,000 milliliters, or 1,000 milliliters for every one liter. Okay? okay? So that's how you would relate two units together. And you can do this for anything else. You could do one liter to, you know, nanoliters or whatever, it doesn't really matter. So the key thing to remember here, since you guys already know about sig figs, this is important, is that these conversion ratios like this are exact numbers. What this means is that at one liter is exactly the same as 1,000 milliliters. That will not change. So that means that when you do problems like this, when you convert, you don't got to worry about sig figs when you look at these sort of things. Well, that makes life a lot easier, doesn't it? It does make life a lot easier because one liter is always 1,000 milliliters. 1,000 milliliters is always one liter. That won't change. So, All right. which is pretty basic. Okay, so if I want to convert this one liter into milliliters, what do you think we would do? These are our two conversion factors. Which well, one would you guess? You said that the point is to cancel, right? That's right. Well, the liters are on top. That's if right. If we want it to cancel, I would want the liters on the bottom. That's exactly right. So, I would choose this one. That's right, exactly. So, the other thing you want to think about is, to kind of prevent confusion, is I don't even worry about my numbers yet. I just look at my units and say, okay, I got liters on top, I want to get rid of them, so I know that I got to put liters on the bottom right here. Makes sense. Pretty basic. Mm -hmm. And then I know that I want to get, talk about milliliters, so I just go, okay, I'll put milliliters on top. Like that. 
And I go, hey, I got milliliters related to liters. I look at these two and I say, oh look, I'm going to be using that conversion factor right there. So I just type in my numbers here. That was on the top, one on the bottom. Yeah. And there we go. Yeah. So things seem easier when the numbers are taken out of the <laughs> equation. It is. You just start with your units. Okay? All right. We notice the liters are canceled out because whatever's on the numerator and whatever's on the denominator, if they're the same, they go away. All right. Okay? And then we're left with milliliters, which is what we wanted. So I know that if I want to express one liter in terms of milliliters, just doing it like this, our answer is 1,000 milliliters. Okay. Pretty fair enough, huh? Fair enough. All right. So there is an alternative way that you can work with these conversion rates. It's, Absolutely. It's optional. You can do this if you want, and that's fine. But I found that this is a more visual way of doing it, and that works for me.